so so we'll go through the the, the basic you know premise or the, or the basic assumptions of relativity and um, then on from that um, we're going to talk about one of the experiments that that seemingly violates his basic assumptions about how the universe has to work and that's where things kind of get get interesting because from there um, we introduce kind of a way to reconcile that which we call the Galilean transformations and and so this you might have seen in a physics one you know um, um, demonstration and and so it does provide one solution for how to fix that except we come across another experiment that seems to completely rule this out so we're going to get to finally the Lorentz transformations which turns out that that is the appropriate way to do these transformations and I'm using these words without even explaining them but um, just basically the, the the fundamental idea that we're going after here is number one why is there a need for relativity and number two, what are the ways that we transform from one system to relate it to the other? That's where relativity literally comes in. It's relating one coordinate system to the other. And the whole point is, how do we transform our mathematics from point A to point B? Is it, that's really what it comes down to. Um, so, so hopefully this presents like at least some cohesive story of, of why we're going to want to use relativity in the future. And where where the classical way of thinking breaks down. So let's go ahead and start with number one, the basic assumption. And the marker is done. Let's see. Of relativity. So you know, for for each, you know, any sort of theory, whether it's, you know, mathematical theory, biological, whatever, you need to directly state your assumptions, the things that, you know, if those don't hold up, everything else just falls out. And, um, you know, for example, in the theory of mathematics, you know, if, if you base your theory of one plus one is two and two plus two is four, if it turns out numbers don't exist, turns out everything you've done since, you know, using numbers is worthless, you know, so this, I mean, that's a bit of an esoteric example. But uh, in the case of relativity, there's a very good basis for what Einstein had originally set forth. And that basis is that, and this is, you know, I can't really, you know, understate this. The laws of physics are the same, no matter who you are, or specifically, no matter what reference frame you are viewing the universe from. So whether you are person A looking here like this, or person B looking backwards, moving in this direction, or person C floating through the sky, you should all agree on the basic laws of physics. And that's what Einstein said, that no matter what your, what, what he called it, what your inertial frame of reference is, everyone should agree on the mathematical laws of physics and, and the, concept, the, the conceptual laws that go along with that. So the way that you, you, you paraphrase that is the laws of physics are the same in all, and I'm going to use a word here, inertial frames. So this is the fundamental underpinnings of everything else that follow from, from uh, relativity. Not, not just special relativity, but general relativity as well. And, and actually, the connection between special and general is, is super interesting. And it, like, it takes the statement to a whole new level, like when you see how you can relate special to general. Uh, by the way, the general theory of relativity, I, I think we may have discussed it, but um, well, the special theory of relativity describes how, how motion works at extremely high velocities. So as we approach the speed of light, the general theory of relativity incorporates not just that special theory as, as an exception, but it incorporates a much bigger framework that allows us to deal with gravitational fields. So let me give an example of this here. Um, if you are a person who's just walking down the street, uh, actually, let, let me go back. Um, let, let's say if we are a person in, you know, just whatever, we're standing still. I'm going to call myself Sally. Sally starts with an S. So Sally here is standing. They have their own reference frame. They, they can state what they view as the X, the Y, and the Z axis. Their, their equations of motion, their laws of physics, whatever they're doing mathematically to describe the universe, 
is going to be written in some form that depends on the coordinates they've listed. And then some other person, Svensson, think of it as S prime, uh, is, is where I'm going here. So Svensson comes up walking past. He has a moving coordinate system, but that moving coordinate system is going at a constant velocity relative to Sally. So Svensson is walking at a, at, at a constant rate. Sally is standing still. There's lots of S's here. <laughs> um, so what, what that means though is that Svensson's moving coordinate system which is separated from Sally's coordinate system by a, by a changing offset, must also describe the laws of physics the same way as Sally's does. I, I hope that makes sense. It, and the, the fundamental rationale behind that, uh, like you understand, it, it, it's basically saying that physics doesn't care who you are, it's still, you, you still have to obey it, is really what that comes down to, you know, in, in a more glorified manner. So, um, that's his fundamental basis for relativity. And literally everything that he did after was in search of trying to make the statement apply for as many theories that we had at the time. Which, you know, if you remember when, when Einstein was doing his work here for special relativity, this was the early 1900s. Um, that, so we didn't have like a nuclear theory of physics yet. Uh, we didn't have, you know, we didn't know the, the strong and the weak nuclear force. Uh, we, we didn't understand you know, neutrinos, things like that. But we did have our laws of, uh, you know, Galilean and more, more, more correctly, Newtonian mechanics. And we had our laws of ele electricity and magnetism. And that those two, those two theories were fully developed as far as we could tell. And so what Einstein realized was though, is if this has to hold, something has to give. And, and part of this lecture here is going to be describing what has to give, like specifically. So, so basically though, like at that time in, in, in the development of physics, Einstein said, if this is true, physics doesn't work. Here's why, here's what we're gonna do with it. And so literally that's, that's the whole rest of our lecture today. So, so I hope that like describes what we're doing here.